IBM has given us access to their R&D facility. This is gonna be great. Let's have a look inside. We're here at IBM's research and development facility in Germany, and we're actually in one of their testing labs where you'll find one of these. This is their new Telum processor, and it's rather fancy. What you'll find here is relatively similar to what you might find in the consumer space. You have eight cores per die, and you have two of these dies, except they've got some extra fancy stuff added in that makes it a whole lot better for its data center applications. Some of those extra things include on-die AI acceleration for things like uh, banks who are running fraud analysis through artificial intelligence, and these chips allow for an insane amount of volume at insanely fast response times, which is really key for those sorts of industries. They also have things like cryptography and compression, uh, hardware acceleration built in, which makes this, like I said, very useful for that sort of uh, data center application. One of the other data center specific features they have is redundancy, but not just on the, the chip level, not just on the backup you know, power supplies and extra disks, even all the way down to the memory. They run what they call RAM or redundant array of, I suppose, not so inexpensive memory, where you literally are running the same thing that you're mirroring RAID essentially for the memory so that you can have failures happen and not lose any data. That's on top of standard error correction, and all of the sort of stuff you might expect. Also memory encryption too. But how do you make one of those chips? How do you test them? Well, that starts with one of these. This is a, a full wafer where you get all of those individual dies all on one big substrate. This uh, specific machine is where they look at the tiny, almost microscopic, in fact, I mean, it's literally a microscope, uh, the tiny little solder balls that are on the, the back of the chip that they use uh, all of their test probes onto to connect to every single circuit in the die to then move over to one of the jigs that we saw earlier, which are frankly incredible. And those jigs get loaded into uh, their test heads, their machines that uh, not only accept the wafers themselves, but also do automatic calibration and sort of location of those dies against where those pins are going to attach, uh, and then physically attach themselves to uh, the, the die or the, the move the die upwards onto those test platforms so that they can run endless amounts of test, collect gigabytes of data per chip or per wafer uh, to test pretty much everything that you can think of from the cores themselves to those on die accelerators to even the, the cache and the SRAM. They want to make sure that everything works as intended. One of the other things that they test here is using a heating and cooling plate. So what they can do is raise the temperature of the chip so that they can test it at higher temperatures and see how it performs then. They can also lower the temperature and cool it back down again. And it's a, a rather impressive bit of kit. One of the key things that they really emphasize here is just how much testing they do they go to rather great lengths to ensure that everything from the chips themselves to the entire servers are as reliable and as you know, thoroughly tested as possible. So much so that they even strapped the entire server to an earthquake tester to see how it performed and it kept running. They even fire proton beams at it to make sure that again, that doesn't cause any significant issues and any significant downtime. Uh, and they really clearly go, well, above and beyond in their testing. But what about those whole servers? Well, let's go have a look at one. This is IBM's new Linux One Emperor 4 system. And um, if you can't tell, we're kind of in a data center. It's rather loud, but this thing's pretty sweet. In here is a collection of both compute drawers and in the one next to it, IO drawers, as well as the management computers and power delivery. But let me take you around the back so we can see what's, um, what's really in here. This one is all of the I.O. drawers. So they separate it between the compute drawer, which is in the one behind me, and I.O. drawers, where the compute units have up to four 
CPUs, of which each of their Talon processors has two separate dies of eight cores for a total of 200 usable cores, plus some extra for redundancy. These I.O. drawers are connected by these PCIe cables. These are kind of insane, but they're also PCIe X16 links to each of the drawers. They're fully redundant, and you can have everything you want in here for I.O., mostly things like fiber, uh, IBM's Ficon, but everything here is redundant. It's incredible. Even the I.O. drawers have redundant power supplies on top of the fact that they have redundant PCIe links. It's, uh, they're really going for reliability here. And inside this one, this bit down here, that is the compute drawer. That has all of your processors, your memory, and obviously the power delivery for the processors. You can have up to four of these in a Linux One stack and a configuration uh, for, like I said, up to 200 addressable cores total. Uh, down at the bottom is all of the cooling. Those cables or those tubing down there is for the self-contained liquid cooling because when you have that much power and that much performance in a chassis, well, you kind of need some good cooling. This is the reservoir that lets that fill up and the, uh, the boxes in the middle here are for power delivery. They do actually have two different types of power delivery. Uh, and then at the top, they have network switches. Those aren't the network switches for the servers though. Those are just for the internal management of the servers. And on top of them are two standard 1U Blade servers that do all of the management. And guess what? That's redundant too. One of the biggest things that IBM are talking about with the Linux One system is about its energy efficiency. One of the new things that they developed is uh, an energy optimization advisor where they gave us a really cool demo where basically in a data center, they have, as you can probably hear, a lot of cooling potential, but obviously that cooling takes a lot of energy. And the cooler the servers are, the less power they need to draw to cool them. So it's a balance between the amount of power that you use to cool the entire data center versus the amount of power you use to cool the CPUs themselves. So they use the hairdryer to trick the system into heat heating up to be able to show us that the energy advisor is actively telling you know, the, the would-be owner, the prospective owners, that, hey, if you reduce the temperature in your data center by two degrees, you could save 120 watts just on this server alone. Imagine that scaled up to an entire data center and you can see where there might be some actual power savings to be had. Of course, one of the main benefits of the Linux One server is that, well, it runs Linux. All of your existing applications just need to be simply recompiled to work on this. There's no major changes that you need to do. And one of the other main benefits IBM was talking about here is that they very much control the end to end. They're the ones actually designing the, the processors themselves, the motherboards, the chassis, the whole setup, and the software stack, including you know, maintaining the Linux kernel, say, GCC compiler. If, for example, the GCC team says, hey, can we add an instruction or can we you know, fix this bug to the processor team? They can go and make that change much more you know, quickly and effectively than, let's say, some of the competitors which don't necessarily have that full end-to-end -end control. One of the other benefits of all of the testing and especially the redundancy they have built into these systems is the fact that they have functionally zero downtime. They were talking about having, on average, four seconds of downtime per year, which is, is just incredible. Uh, and it means that for places like the financial sector, where uptime is literally money, that's a pretty big deal. The other thing that can help save you some money with these systems is in the power efficiency perspective, where if you happen to be running some x86 servers, well, according to IBM, you can half the number of servers in your data center and still get the same or better performance with one of these Linux One systems, or I suppose quite a few of them. And you can drop your power consumption by 75%. That is like not even unsubstantial. That's massive. That's huge. And it's uh, an impressive feat. So that's a look at IBM's R&D facility. I want to thank them very much for having us. It's been a fantastic, uh, well, chance to look at some of their behind the scenes stuff, how they make and test some of their Talon processors, and of course, their new Linux One Emperor 4 system. 
Uh, if you want to see more videos like this one, I can't promise more R&D facility tours, but you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon, see more videos like that. There'll also be plenty more videos on the end cars as well, although of course, again, none quite like this. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.